I just checked into my hotel in Bundaberg and do you want proof that I'm in a hotel in a regional part of Queensland or Australia in fact? This Nescafe Blend 33, the most simple, basic, down-to-earth coffee sachets you can get. Well, I like Bundy already because one, I haven't been here in 11 years and two, is the ability to use slightly crass language and have a good joke around. Check it out. I reckon it's always nice to start a holiday by heading to the beach. Walk over to Bundaberg Plaza shops, catch bus route 4 out to Pagara. Buses in Bundaberg operate every Monday to Saturday, with services running mostly on the hour every hour or so, during the week, and every two hours on Saturdays. There's no services on Sundays or public holidays. Make sure you put your phone away and look out the window as there's some great views. The journey between the centre of Bundy and Kelly's Beach takes about half an hour. Once at Kelly's Beach, you will notice that there is a great mix of soft and firm sand, lovely calm water, and you'll see these really cool sun lounges. If you are from another state, I hate to break it to you, but this is really proof that Queensland does have the best beaches. I mean, just, would you look at that? I mean, can you fault it? It's just beautiful, right? Crystal clear water. You can even see the blue lagoonish effect in some bits, which are coral reef, in fact, because this is actually part of the Southern Great Barrier Reef. So, you know, you don't have to go all the way up to Cairns if you want to see the reef. Just based on showing you Bagara alone, really, why would you not want to come here? It's pretty bloody nice, honestly. I'm walking along the beach, the plumbers aren't so nice, they can bugger off as far as I'm concerned. But apart from that, absolutely stunning sun. Now you've got to keep in mind, today is 25 degrees, it's the middle of winter, and I'm still here in a t-shirt. I mean, you can't get much better than this Queensland, can you? So do yourself a favour, come and check it out. Who's that good looking fella in the sand there? I don't know. Well, I think he's a good looking bloke too, so... If you enjoy this video and you enjoy looking at that good looking bloke in the sand, why not hit a thumbs up to this video, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so that you can be always up to date with the latest co content on Talking Planning. After a bit of walking around at the beach, I decided it was time to head back to the city on board the bus again and get off at a famous Bundaberg institution, the Rum Distillery. It was then time to head back to my hotel, have a relaxing afternoon, grab a pint, grab some dinner, and then go and have a kip. Good morning, it's day two in Bundaberg, and it's Friday morning, and it's just before seven, and it's really bloody smoky and hazy, but let's go and check out this little city. After the surprisingly warm day that was yesterday, this morning is quite brisk. So, hopefully, it stays alright. As you should know on this channel, when there's a bubbler, we're going to do a bubbler review. And whilst we're in Bundy, there's a prime example there to try. Let's see how it tastes. Mmm. Not bad, although it does stay on for a few seconds after you've finished. But, it's pretty solid. After an average cafe breakfast, I headed over to Hinkler Central to catch bus 6B over to Elliot Heads. Remember how I said that buses run roughly hourly in Bundy? Well, there's one exception to the rule, and that is bus routes 6A and 6B, which run once in the morning and once in the afternoon. But just like bus route 4, Keep your eyes looking out the window and off your phone because there are some really lovely views. This bus ride also takes about half an hour from the city centre. And from there, I'm going to go for a bit of a long walk through to Bagara. So I just got off the 6B at Innes Park Reserve and 
from what I've seen, I think there's a pretty nice view to have a look at. So, I've got off and over a little bit of time, I'm going to walk all the way back up to Bagara End, which is probably six or seven k's, but exercise isn't going to kill me, let's be real. But first, let's go and see how this view is. And a Suzuki Mighty Boy. That really just makes it even better. Now, as I'm walking along, if you're wondering why I'm ducking in between sand and road and sand and road, it's because the beach, if you can see behind me, is covered in rocks. And there are certain bits of beach, like what's just coming up ahead, where there's basically no sand line at all. So you've got to be really careful because it's going to be quicker and safer walking along a road than it is trying to traverse a bunch of rocks. So on the walk I've had to switch between beach and road more times than I can count but we are making progress toward our destination. So I just walked along a waterfront track now. That was a really nice way to walk around. However, be careful, be very careful. There's a lot of rocks, uneven ground and prickly pears that you don't want to be near. So I'd be very, very cautious if you were to walk that trail. Um, also the good thing about summer is the good, thing, sorry, the good thing about it being winter and not summer is most of the snakes are hibernating and trust me, with the amount of rocky outcrops and stuff like that, there'd be some there. So keep a look out, keep a very, very careful eye and if you do spot one, keep still because they're just as scared of you as you are as scared of them. So just let them be and you shouldn't have an issue. So, I believe the area we're walking through is called Rifle Range Creek. And apparently there's a pedestrian bridge as part of that as well. And this path is part of the Rifle Range Creek Bridge. So, we're gonna walk along it now and walk through this really nice little bit of parkland with this reedy stuff and cane or whatever it is growing. Be grateful for the fact there's a nice seal of a path and make our way through to more of the Bagara area and hopefully then on a bus back towards Bundaberg itself so I can explore more around the town centre later this afternoon and go for a quick walk around to my morning before I head back to Brisbane. Ah, so that's the new bridge they're talking about and actually looks really nice. Yeah, so this bridge is handy, otherwise right now, as you can see if you look out there, my feet would be getting wet and that would make walking the rest of the way into Bagara and then round town for the rest of the day really bad because I didn't bring a second pair of shoes. So, cheers for the bridge. After the bridge, there are even more pathways through the back of Innes Park that connect into Bagara. Nothing too exciting to report whilst on the journey though. Eventually, I made it back to the Carlisle Gardens bus stop where I could catch a bus back into town. I made my way out to the Bundy Barrel, 
but I didn't pop inside because the next bus into town was only 15 minutes away. Another thing which you can come and do in Bundy is visit this big ass barrel, which is pretty neat. And I wasn't prepared for a two hour wait for the next service or a three or four K walk back to the hotel. And in a strange turn of events, I managed to get joined by this bloody big kookaburra. After heading into town, I came across this cheeky kookaburra. And from there it was time to go and grab a coffee and some cake and head back to the hotel for a relaxing evening in. Let's be real, the other reason you probably choose Bundaberg over some other regional centres is this. Bundy rum. And because I went to the distillery yesterday and bought some gifts for my parents as well, I bought myself some select vat aged six years and let's give it a whirl, shall we? Friday night. Cheers. Oh, that's good. Surprisingly, when he heading out to grab dinner, I found a restaurant that made kotu, one of my favourite dishes from when I was in Sri Lanka last year. It was fantastic. So I'm going to turn in for the night and I'll see you in the morning. Good morning. I just thought I'd say that it's half five and yes, it's still dark because it's 5.30 in the morning on a Saturday in the middle of winter and I'm wearing shorts and thongs. <laughs> no, there's a reason for that and that is my shoes. I walked so much over the last few days, I actually wore straight through the bottom of them, so they're basically useless, but I'm heading back to Brisbane today and I'm going to take the train. I've really been willing to try the tilt train for a while, and today's my chance, and I'll be travelling in business class on board the tilt train from Bundaberg to Brisbane. I started day three nice and early with a walk down to the banks of the Burnett, where I watched the sun rise. It was a really beautiful way to start the morning, and if you're an early riser, it's definitely worth the walk. So in a couple of hours time, my train to Brisbane is going to come across that bridge and pull into Bundaberg Station just a few hundred metres down there. And it'll be about a four and a half hour, four hour, 45 minute ride from here to Roma Street, which I'm really looking forward to, actually. Afterward, I quickly made my way back into town, stopped by the Burt Hinkler Memorial on Burbong Street, and grabbed a hearty breakfast from the bakery, and whilst eating, looked at the hotel menu and noticed that there was lamb's fry, which I very definitely avoided. Check it out again, it's me cat. I still just can't believe they got away with it. It's, it's just that country humour for you, it's beautiful. Like I'm sure it's got some other significance, but it really does sound like a male appendage. And from there, it was just time to check out of the hotel and to make my way to the station. My train arrived into Bundaberg about 15 minutes behind schedule, and now I'm on my way home. So let's quickly summarise how I found the trip, how much you can expect to spend, and to give you some ideas if you want to try this for yourself. All right, so if you're just watching the rest of that video, I've decided that to make this decision easier on whether you want to go to Bundaberg or not, I've totted up the costs in this very handy little list here. So the first thing is, I was very lucky. I flew up to Bundaberg and took the train back. A lot of people will do the same mode both ways, but I just wanted to compare how they operated and to see what it was like for myself. I saved a fair bit of money by getting a drop off to the airport for free. Thank you, Auntie Lena. I really appreciate it. 
So once I got to the airport, I got myself breakfast, and that was about 15 bucks. Everyone knows airport breakfast is fairly underwhelming. My flight to Bundaberg was $107.33 with all the taxes, fees, and charges, which I thought was all right. Um, not super cheap, but it wasn't a budget airline anyway. I walked from the airport to the local shops, which is about a K and a half, and then caught the bus from the shops to the hotel. That was a $3.20 one-way ticket. Then once I got to the hotel, two nights was 224.10. It just was a standard sort of Best Western motor in. So it is a very car-based hotel, but you don't have to have a car to stay there. And I certainly didn't, and that was fine. Next up, I had two day tickets for local buses. $8 a day, $16. I didn't buy a ticket on the Saturday because I was walking distance to the train and I had no need to catch the bus, quite frankly. The next one was my actual train ticket back. Now, I travelled in business class, which is a little bit more expensive, but it's only about $20, $25 more than an economy train seat, and that was $97.55. Factoring in about $100 for local food, drinks, and a few small souvenirs, and that leaves me with the grand total price of, drumroll please... That was probably the most pathetic drum roll ever, but $563.20, which I think is fairly reasonable. Look, obviously, it's not going to appeal to every budget of travel, but you could go a lot further and do a lot worse. I had fun, and given the fact that you can't go overseas at the moment, I thought it was reasonable value. I should also point out that does not include the big spending at the Bundaberg Rum Distillery. I haven't factored that in because not everyone is going to go and get themselves a bunch of rum, but many of you will. So keep that in mind when you're deciding how much you want to spend and what goodies you want to pick up from the rum distillery if you are a rum drinker. So thank you so much for joining me on Talking Planning. I really hope you enjoy this city review of Bundaberg and I will see you around soon. Cheers.